Howdy boys, it's NPC and today we're going to be going over the top 10 throwback vehicles in GTA Online. GTA was released all the way back in 2013, meaning the game's been out for just about a decade. And we have so many f***ing vehicles in the game right now. I thought it'd be fun to go over the top 10 vehicles that everyone hopefully knows and loves. Before we dive into things, drop a like if you guys enjoyed the video, that would really help it get the attention that it deserves. And without further ado, let's hop into things. With number 10 being the Akuma. Now the Akuma used to be one of the fastest bikes in GTA Online. And some of you guys might be wondering why the Bati isn't on the list instead. I think that's because the Bati is still, oops, the Bati is still a relevant vehicle. It's still pretty useful as like an MC business owner. If you were gonna spawn a bike, the Bati's still a relatively good choice. But the Akuma is one that nobody talks about or looks at anymore, despite the fact that it used to be one of the fastest bikes in the entire game. I personally was never a huge fan of the Akuma compared to the Bati, but I know a lot of people enjoyed racing with it, and I thought it was definitely worthy of making this list since it was once very loved. Up next, we have the Armored Karuma which I'm sure you guys all know if you played GTA in the early days because this was the OG heist vehicle. It was almost a must have in order to do heists like the Fleece job and the Pacific Rim job. Pretty much every single person owned a Karuma, which makes sense because it was one of the only bulletproof vehicles in the game at the time. Unfortunately, in this day and age, it doesn't really hold up. There's a ton of explosives in online now. So while the Karuma is bulletproof, it is not explosive resistant and it pretty much gets rendered useless. On top of that, there's a lot of much faster vehicles that are armored as well and explosive resistant and and I didn't think much of it back in the day, but the Karuma is a little bit understeery. I never really seemed to notice, but Rockstar has been introducing a bunch of new cars with crazy performance. So I guess by comparison, it doesn't really hold up anymore, but the Karuma will forever be the OG goat of heists. Oh my God. And it's very deserving of the number nine spot. Number eight on our list is the Dubachi Masakro. I feel like the Masakra has always been sort of an underrated car. Even when it did have its time in the spotlight as one of the best sports cars, there were a lot of other viable contenders at the time, like the Elegy. But the Masakra is not only fast, it's very sleek looking, it looks incredibly sexy. And I find that a lot of people really like this vehicle, despite the fact that it never really gets talked about in terms of performance or even visuals. I think it's just a really nice drive. The car feels very heavy. And it's got that sort of multi-purpose feel, you know, it's got a pretty decent top speed, handling, acceleration. There's really nothing to complain about with this car, and I think that's why people like it so much. To add on to what I said about it being multi-purpose, it makes for a wonderful free mode driver and was also a nice alternative for racers who didn't want to use the LG all the time because it does get a little boring when one car dominates the class for a very, very long time. <coughs> Metelli. <coughs> Up next we have the Savage, which some of you may know because it was one of the best farms for money back in the day. Before we had all of these automated businesses, there was this mission that you could do called Trash Talk, where pretty much you would take a, usually a Hydra or a Savage, but the Savage was much more affordable at the time. So a lot of people would have the Savage and you would go around and destroy a few vans and then you would come here and destroy a few trash trucks. For being so old, the Savage had pretty decent weapons. It's got your standard homing missile as well as with the homing off and then it's got a, a cannon that is explosive similar to the Hydra. It is pretty powerful. Nowadays, a lot of weaponized vehicles are equipped with multiple overpowered weapons, but back in the day, the only other explosive cannon besides the Savage was the Hydra, which was $3 million and only a one-seater, so it was a lot more convenient for people to farm money together if you had a Savage. Unfortunately, no one talks about it anymore because it is slow, it's not the tankiest helicopter anymore, and there's just better options overall, like the Akula, for example. It's probably the one that decommissioned the Savage, but I still think it's a really sick helicopter and it'll always be very dear. Up next, we have the LG Retro Custom, which is a vehicle that a lot of people have probably experimented with considering it's free. It was supposed to be the first Nissan GTR added into online. They did a, an okay job. It looks a little dog-like, but <laughs> that's okay. The LG used to be the fastest sports car for a very long time before like, finance and felony i want to say around the cunning stunts around that time was when it finally was dethroned which is a little sad but it did have a very supreme reign 
It was pretty uncontested for a long time. But it was nice that it was at the top of its class because it enabled a lot of people to race, especially early game, considering it's a free vehicle on Legendary Motorsport. Unfortunately, since it was dethroned like five or six years ago, it hasn't seen much gameplay or talk by anyone in the community, really. It's all the Itali GTO now, which is leagues faster than the LG. But it's a really nice car considering it's free. If you guys are interested in grabbing one, you can find it on the two-door section of Legendary Motorsport towards the bottom of the list. Right here, as you can see, it says free. If you've been playing the game for a long time, I'd get one for nostalgic purposes. And if you're a new player, I would get one as well because it's just good free transport. But other than that, I just don't really think the vehicle holds up to today's standard for most things, both visually and performance wise. Up next we have the Trafade Adder, which was the first Bugatti ever added into GTA Online. Right now we have quite the selection. We've got the Nero, the Nero Custom, and the brand new Thrax as well. But the Adder is the GOAT. It was a lot of people's favorite vehicle during the olden days of GTA because of its really high top speed and it's a lot more unique design. It's a lot more rounded compared to some of the other OG vehicles. Unfortunately, you can't throw a spoiler on it, which would increase its traction and, you know, maybe make it a little viable because its top speed is actually really high. Still is a little lackluster compared to the supercar standard today, but it's a really awesome looking vehicle and very special to a lot of people because it is a fan favorite and a classic. This customization that I have on it right now, the blue with the ice white and the black stripes is actually based off of video gaming superstar Harm Nuns adder from way back in the day when he would take me to go money farming. He would call an adder that looked just like this and uh, drive us down to the airfield where we'd pick up a savage and then we would farm trash talk. That's my personal experience with the adder. Very nostalgic for me and uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys have similar stories. Share them in the comments. Number four on our list is the Progen T20. One of the sickest vehicles the GTA has ever seen in my opinion. This was the GOAT. This was the gateway to a new era of cars, I think. With the active spoiler first being added into GTA Online, that was a big step for Rockstar to add more graphically intensive vehicles, added a bigger variety of vehicles. Vehicles started to become more realistic looking. The T20 is based off of the McLaren 720S, and I think it's a pretty accurate representation, especially from the back. It's fairly realistic looking. The front end is a little more like it's got the GTA spin on it, you know what I mean? It looks a little goofier, more cartoonish, I guess. But the T20 used to be the fastest supercar in the game. Pretty much everyone owned a T20. It dominated the supers class for quite a long time, and uh, a lot of YouTubers at the time made a lot of content off of this thing. Back when people would play mini games, like where there were people standing on a center platform and you would jump ramps in T20s and try to knock them off. A very good car for content because it was so fast and it looks beautiful as well. Unfortunately, today, it's just not that fast of a supercar anymore. It doesn't have terrible performance though, so if you guys are looking for a fun, maybe nostalgic free mode driver, I think the T20 is a fantastic choice. It feels very light, which is nice. If you guys are looking to grab a T20, you can find it under the two-door section of Legendary Motorsport, more towards the bottom again because it is still a pretty old vehicle. For $2.2 million, it used to be a pretty expensive price tag. Now it's kind of like a normal supercar price. I think its value has depreciated over time. Back in the day, I would say it was worth $2.2 million. By today's standard, I think you're not getting quite as much bang for your buck. I would probably place it at like $1.6 or $7 million. But it's still a lovely car. I've had this one since... I bought it like almost seven years ago, so it's not going anywhere. It used to be one of my favorite supercars, and I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way. Up next, we have the Sultan RS, which is an absolutely beautiful supercar in my opinion. I love the Sultan. I think it's one of the coolest looking supercars in GTA. Even to this day, I don't think there's anything else that's really like it. The Sultan was also one of the fastest supercars in the game, but unfortunately it was dethroned by the T20 and the Osiris. Correct me if I'm wrong, I wasn't playing quite then. I joined when the T20 was dominant, but the Sultan has always been visually stunning. And even though its performance is a little worse than the T20, the reason why it's placed higher on this list is because it's a Benny's vehicle and it has a ton of customization options. The T20 gets carried a little bit by its beautiful body shape and the active spoiler, but it doesn't have all that much customization. The Sultan, on the other hand, has a ton of customization. As you can see, mine is very modded out. No two Sultans ever really look the same, which is a, a really nice feature about this vehicle because it 
it means it's very personalizable. And I think that adds some special attachment to our vehicles because no one wants to be driving the same thing as someone else, you know? If you guys are looking to grab one of these, you can buy a Karen Sultan off of the Benny's website for $12,000. And then once you take the Sultan into the Benny's workshop, you can upgrade it for a little under $800,000. After adding all of the customization, your total is probably going to be around $1.2 or $1.3 million, which is actually really good bang for your buck. If you guys don't have a Sultan, I would highly recommend grabbing one of these because not only are they beautiful, they're a pretty consistent drive, they sound really nice, and the best part is that there's a shit ton of customization, meaning you can make it unique, you can make it your own. No one else is probably gonna have a Sultan that looks like yours. In second, this should come as no surprise to anyone who's been watching my recent videos, we have the Overflat Entity XF, the OG Koenigsegg in GTA. But this thing is actually a monster off the line. It's got ridiculous acceleration for being such an old vehicle. Unfortunately, the top end doesn't really hold up to today's standard. There's a lot of really fast supercars in a straight line. This is not one of them, but it does have a lot of them be right at the start of races, going from zero to 60. The XF is for sure a go-to. Compared to the brand new Entity MT that was added into the game, for example, this thing will destroy it on startup, but then it'll eventually get passed. So not the greatest for a drag scenario, but for racing around a track, the XF can for sure put up a good fight. In the early days of GTA, a lot of people found this car to be really aesthetically pleasing. Unfortunately, compared to today's supercars and Koenigseggs, I think it's kind of ugly. But back in the day, the bar was not set that high. So I think a lot of people found it really attractive. I know for my friends and I, after completing the final story mission heist, we all went out and bought XFs and painted them this color, pretty much did this exact customization. I would love to see an overhaul for the vehicle, giving it a lot more customization because I think there's a lot of really cool things that you can probably do with this sort of build. But if you guys are wondering whether or not this vehicle is worth having, then I would say yes it is because it is under $800,000, which is pretty cheap in today's standard. That's like two business sales. And I think having monstrous acceleration is still pretty sought after trade. And the number one throwback vehicle in all of GTA Online is the Pegasi Zentorno. I feel like this shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone. The Zentorno is the GOAT. This one also used to be one of the fastest supercars in the game. It didn't have all that much time in the spotlight, but it was viable for a very, very long time. It's everyone's favorite OG Lamborghini. And uh, with the recent addition of new customization, as you guys can probably see, if you guys are people who have played GTA, but maybe haven't touched the game in a while, there's a lot of new customization on the vehicle. And I think that goes to show that Rockstar is listening to their community. They love the Zentorno too. Otherwise, why would it get so much love and attention getting new customization? Pretty much everyone had a Zentorno because of how cheap it is, how great it looked and how well it performed making it the perfect package deal. If you guys are looking to grab one of these, you can find it on Legendary for $725,000. Even though its performance doesn't hold up in the racing scene, I think it makes for a really good free mode driver. It's got really good grip to the ground, it's got pretty good acceleration, its top speed is decent, and it's very customizable. That's gonna wrap it up for the top 10 throwback vehicles in GTA Online. Drop a like if you guys enjoyed the video, comment down below and let me know what you thought of my list. Let me know what you guys would have added, what were throwbacks for you. Sub to the channel if y'all are new. There will be more videos like this coming out in the very near future and that's about it. Take care and I'll catch you boys in the next one. Peace.